Yeah, my name is Lane Leverett. Um, I'm a VCDX. Um, I've uh, been working with VMware here now for, gosh, about six years, back since uh, VMware was 2. ESX 2.5. Um, and I've uh, truly enjoyed virtualization in the journey. As soon as I saw it, I, I saw that this was something that was up and coming and something that really needed, I needed to grab a hold on. So um, I've really been enjoying the, enjoying the ride. Um, loved the, the Steve Harrod's keynote. Um, it was nice to see um, Paul Moritz's keynote as well, just to see that the vision's continuing. So there wasn't a lot of change there, um, but it was really good to see that they're still on course and it's, it's a, it's a long-term vision and goal, but they're, they're staying the course for it and they're really delivering and executing on everything that they've, they've promised so far. Um, and along with that, so Steve Harrod's um, keynote, he mentioned a couple things that really got me excited. So Project Octopus. Um, great name for a project, um, and plus it's just uh, it's phenomenal. I use Dropbox as it is every day for for my use, and it's just been incredibly useful for me. So I can see that in a in a corporate setting, having that ability to be able to um, have files and files shared across multiple platforms, types, and devices. That's just that's just going to be a phenomenal um, tool to be used within the enterprise. Um, and then the other one I've had a lot of discussions with other people uh, is the App Blaster. So the ability to be able to present Windows applications to non-Windows devices, that's just, that's huge. And if, if, you know, if VMware can truly deliver and execute on that, um, that's going to change the industry. Um, I went to uh, Brian Madden's um, session on uh, terminal server versus um, um, VDI, and he, he mentioned that as well. And there was, there's truly that idea that if VMware can make this happen, that's, that's going to be huge for the industry, and I think that's going to be huge for delivering desktops to end users, no matter what their device or platform is that they're using. So, yeah, that's some great stuff coming up. Favorite session so far has been uh, Don Mann's session. It was on uh, 10 gig Ethernet. Um, and going through um, the different uh, UCS platforms, uh, HP's um, um, C7000 chassis and rack mount servers and how to actually use um, uh, 10 gig Ethernet and Converge Network FCOE and some of the design uh, considerations for it. Um, really in depth, a lot of good practical hands-on knowledge. He's a phenomenal and dynamic speaker as well and is really passionate about what he does. Um, so I give him props up for that. He did a he did a phenomenal job. I took a lot of stuff away from that as well for some of my own designs. So it was it was it was a great and, and plus an, an interactive session. A lot of times the sessions become one way with the speakers and and Don was able to do a really good job of interacting with the audience during the presentation, but yet still being able to get through it and, and uh, present all the material as well. So yeah, kudos to him. So first got into a virtualization. I was a network admin at a, um, uh, a company, and, and we uh, got to evaluate some of the products. This was back, like I mentioned, in the ESX 2.5 days. Um, so we were able to take their, their product and start to look at it, and I really saw the convergence and the disruption that, that uh, virtualization was going to bring because it was just not a, a new product, but it was a new product that incorporated storage, networking, operating systems, applications, everything together and kind of brought it all together. Um, so I really realized that that was definitely uh, where the industry could head because it was going to enable a lot of features, a lot of things like mobility and disaster recovery, things that were just really difficult and manual and tedious. Um, I could see the enablement of those features and, and, and uh, allowing us to do new things that we were never able to do before. Uh, so that's that's kind of what shifted me into that. Um, for folks that haven't uh, jumped on the bandwagon today, I, you really need to because um, I see things in the industry changing. I've talked to a lot of my customers, and those that are being successful um, are really changing from having siloed teams from networking, storage, Wintel um, type of environments are starting to converge into more of a data center or a virtualization team. Um, that way they're able to effectively communicate better because the lines of, of uh, administration are blurring. Um, you're really seeing this convergence of storage, networking, and compute and applications coming together. So there has to be a lot more crosstalk, a lot more communication. Um, so those people that are doing well and, and are, are, are being effective, um, I've seen that, that type of a, a, a shift in the industry. And I really feel in the next five to ten years it's going to be changing um, Roles will be changing within organizations, and, and if people don't get on board the ship fast, they may be left behind. Um, so I've been encouraging a lot of my customers and clients to, to make sure they keep up with it, make sure they invest um, in their own education and virtualization, because it truly is going to be the way of the future and the way things go from here on. So.
first of all, it was just that the process is long. So um, you have to be prepared for it's not your typical, I'm going to read a book or, or take some courses and, and study for an exam and pass the exam. Um, it's a set of examinations as prerequisites. So the, that part of the process is similar to things people may have gone through before. Um, so there are those, those prereqs that need, people will need to go through. But when you actually get to the, um, the core of the VCDX process, um, number one, you really need to be doing designs. Um, you need to be in front of customers. Um, I know there's uh, some people like Jason Bakke who have done designs um, as a customer, um, but that's because he's been at an architect level and I think he's had that exposure within his company. Um, but if you haven't had that exposure as an architect um, or a designer for uh, within a company or you're not actually customer facing, um, it's a lot more difficult. Um, so you need to be able to be prepared to be able to do a design and do an effective design. Um, and have all the documentation that goes along with that. And I was just actually recently talking with another VCDX uh, before this interview, and we were talking through about the process. Um, and that was one of the things for him that was interesting, and me as well, is just how much documentation really is required in order to present a good design. Um, previous designs that I've done in the past, have, uh, I've done a really good job on documentation, but, but when looking at the requirements for the VCDX and, and what's actually required when you uh, um, submit your design in your application, uh, to uh, VMware is there's a lot of requirements for documentation and there's a full set of documentation that needs to be um, delivered. Um, the other part of the process that was um, probably actually the most difficult part of the process for me um, was the actual app application itself. So not actually the defense portion, um, which was nerve wracking. Um, but uh, the actual application, I, and I, I didn't prepare myself and give myself enough time. I was scrambling at the last minute to get everything done um, because I did have to beef up the documentation I had for my existing design. Um, and then the application itself is quite extensive as far as what they're looking for and all the um, information that you need to provide on, on that application. And, <clears throat> and I can't stress enough that if they ask for something, you need to provide it. You can't gloss over any parts of the application or it will get kicked back to you. Um, so you need to make sure that you, have, you know, fill that out completely and effectively um, and provide all the do documentation completely and effectively because if you don't, again, you're gonna, you'll get some feedback back, but you'll, you'll get your design uh, submission kicked back. Um, you can then resubmit at that point if you want to. But, um, and then the actual defense itself, um, this is where it goes into more of uh, making sure that you've been customer facing or you've been in front of customers to deliver a design um, because part of the, there's the defense of your design itself. Um, which you need to make sure that you really do know your design backwards and forwards. So they'll ask you questions, not only about your design, but why you didn't do things on your design, why certain things weren't done, not necessarily why, what, what did you do, uh, but to understand fully that you really truly understood your design, you understood the constraints, you understood the requirements of the customer um, and what was necessary to put forth. Because not every design is going to be optimal that you're going to deliver to a customer because there are going to be excuse me, constraints and requirements that are necessary that are going to hamper a truly, you know, perfect design. Um, so your design may not be perfect and that's okay and they understand that. So they want to see the process and understand that you know um, why you may have had a suboptimal design in certain areas in order to allow it to be more effective in other areas. Um, so you need to make sure you, you know that and deliver that. And then the customer facing part comes in after the fact when you have to do a mock design for them. They present you with a, a, a customer use case and they become the customer. And then you have to whiteboard out a design for, you, for them. Um, and one of the things that uh, was mentioned in the uh, uh, VCDX uh, workshop that they uh, held yesterday is think out loud. Um, you can't, even if you're a quiet or an introverted person, you need to make sure that you're able to talk out what you're thinking and they want to see your thought process as you're going through. They understand that you're not going to finish the design, you don't have enough time to do that. Um, but they want to see that you understand the process and they want to understand what you're actually thinking. So writing stuff out on the whiteboard, um, nice and big so that they can see, making sure that they can understand what you're doing so you're talking about it as you go through the process. Um, those things are all very important in order to, to get that through. And then finally, there's a troubleshooting section at the end of the, the defense. <laughs> and, the, and that's you know, just typical, you know, something's broken and they want to understand that you know how, um, from a design perspective, what may be wrong with that particular design that's causing an issue or causing a problem. So it's not necessarily just a break fix, understand the technical requirements of, of how to fix the problem, but actually understand how to fix the design, what may be wrong with the design that's actually causing that problem. So it's a lot, <laughs> it really is. <sighs> ah, 
Oh, well, so I get to uh, go back, go back to work. Um, and I'm really excited to actually now bring all this information back uh, um, as far as my um, job at ENS. Um, I was the only engineer able to be out here at VMworld, so I get to transfer all that information back to our company. So I'm going to have a probably a series of uh, lunch and learns with our engineers just to, to impart all the information that uh, I learned here as well. And then also be doing that with customers as well. Um, we already had a pre um, vSphere 5 uh, before it was GA, had a lunch and learn with customers and had a fabulous turnout. Everybody's really excited and interested to learn about uh, vSphere 5 and uh, what, what's, what's available in that. So there's going to be some follow-on sessions to go deeper into each of those sections, um, specifically storage and, and just because there's such a, um, um, a lot of information that was delivered, a lot of new product features that were delivered in vSphere 5 around storage. So there's, there's definitely some heightened interest in that. Security as well from that perspective. I've had a lot of good feedback from vShield. Some, some of the customers haven't always uh, looked at or implemented vShield in the past, even though they may have been licensed for it. Um, and so I'm starting to see that pick up and, and see people realize that that's, that's an available way to look at doing security and doing, doing uh, controlling access in a way that they may not have been able to do before. So that's, that's going to be some exciting stuff. I'm also excited about View 5. That's now been finally uh, um, announced and hopefully it will be GA'd soon. Um, so as soon as that's uh, GA'd, uh, definitely looking forward to uh, producing some um, training material around that. That'll be exciting to come out with uh, train signal. So.